on state and society. When society is orderly, a fool alone cannot disturb it. To blame the Tao for not working while we are living in a polluted world is like tying down a unicorn from two directions and expecting it to run a thousand miles. Place a monkey in a cage and it is the same as a pig, not because it isn't clever and quick, but because it has no place to freely exercise its capabilities. Those who can become rulers must be able to find winners. Those who can win over opponents must be strong. Those who can be strong are able to use the power of other people. To be able to use the power of other people, it is necessary to win people's hearts. To be able to win people's hearts, it is necessary to have self-mastery. To be capable of self-mastery, it is necessary to be flexible. The ancient establishment of rulers was not for the service of their desires. And when sages lived in lowly positions, it was not for the purpose of taking things easy. Rulership was set up because the strong oppressed the weak, the many did violence to the few, the cunning foiled the simple, the bold attacked the timid, people kept knowledge to themselves and did not teach, people accumulated wealth and did not share it. So the institution of rulership was set up to equalize and unify them. Spiritual government is the very best. Next best is to make it impossible for people to do wrong. Next after that is to reward the worthy and punish the disruptive. As a balance scale is fair insofar as it weighs things impartially, and a plumb line is correct insofar as it determines straight lines impartially, a ruler who applies the law without personal likes and dislikes can thereby command. When rulers are very crafty, their subjects are very devious. When rulers have many obsessions and interests, their subjects do a lot of posturing. When rulers are uneasy, their subjects are unsettled. When rulers are very demanding, their subjects are contentious. If you don't straighten this out at the root, but concern yourself with the branches, this is like stirring up dust as you try to clean a room, like carrying a bunch of kindling as you try to put out a fire. Therefore, the affairs of sages are limited and easy to manage. Their requirements are few and easy to satisfy. They are benevolent without trying. They are trusted without speaking. They gain without seeking. They succeed without striving. They perceive reality alone, embrace virtue, and extend sincerity. Everyone follows them like echoes of sound, like reflections of form. What they cultivate is fundamental. They are able to defer to the wise when they see them because they are mindless of social status. They disintegrate. When ear and eye are unruly, they become exhausted. Therefore, leaders imbued with the way stop imagining and get rid of willfulness, remaining poised in a state of clarity and openness. What enables a nation to survive is benevolence and justice. What enables people to live is practical virtue. A nation without justice will perish even if it is large. People without goodwill will be wounded even if they are brave. The ruler is the mind of the nation. When the mind is orderly, all nodes are calm. When the mind is disturbed, all nodes are deranged. So in one whose mind is orderly, the limbs of the body forget about each other. When a country is orderly, the ruler and ministers forget about each other. The greatest simplicity is formless. The most far-reaching way is measureless. Therefore, the sky is round without being set to a compass. The earth is straight without being set to a ruler. 
Those who value life do not destroy themselves for material gain. Those who are firm in ethics do not try to spare themselves when they see difficulty. Those greedy for money disregard their health when they see a profit to be made. Those who want a good name will not try to get it unjustly. When people have more than enough, they defer. When they have less than enough, they contend. When people defer, courtesy and justice are born. When they contend, violence and disorder arise. When society is orderly, the common people are upright and cannot be seduced by profit. When society is disorderly, the elite are villainous and cannot be stopped by the law. The art of human leadership is to manage affairs without contrivance, without speaking. To be pure and calm, unmoving, unshakably consistent, delegating as to subordinates according to custom so that duties are accomplished without strain. Covetous people with many desires are lulled to sleep by power and profit, seduced into longing for fame and status. They wish to rise in the world through exceptional cunning, so their vitality and spirit are depleted daily and become further and further away. The world can be gained, but not taken. Rulership can be accepted, but not sought. Rely on intelligence and people will contest it. Rely on power and people will fight it. It is not possible to render people completely ignorant, but it is possible to render them unable to use their intelligence against you. It is not possible to render people completely powerless, but it is possible to render them unable to use their power against you. These two things are always in the long view. If you want to know the way of the sky, observe the seasonal cycles. If you want to know the way of the earth, find out what kind of trees grow there. If you want to know the way of people, let them have what they want. In ancient times, when the state of Chu was going to attack the state of Sung, the philosopher Mo Tzu heard of this and lamented. He set off from his native state of Lu, and walked for ten days and nights. His feet were blistered and calloused, but he didn't rest until he got to Chu, tearing off pieces of his clothing to wrap his feet as he went along. When he saw the king of Chu, Moatsu said, I heard you were raising an army to attack Sung. Are you attacking Sung with an infallible plan already worked out to take it? Have you forgotten about the suffering and the hardship you will cause the people? If your army were going to be halted and your weapons broken down and you were to be infamous for injustice without having gained a square foot of territory, would you still attack Sung? The king said, If I was certain to fail to take Sung, doing an injustice, why would I attack it? Moatsu said, The way I see it, you will surely do violence to justice and also fail to conquer Sung. The king said, I have the most skilled craftsmen in the world to construct siege towers. If I set them up to attack Sung, how can I fail to take it? Moetsu then told the king to have his artisan set up a siege, saying that he would show how a defense could be made. The master craftsman set up nine sieges, and Moetsu foiled every one, not letting any through.